So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Barbarian starter and endgame build in Diablo 4. So at the start I will explain how to play this class. Then we will look into the best skills, rotations, what gems and gear to use so you would get the highest damage possible and much more. So Barbarian has big AoE skills with high damage to farm a lot of mob groups very quickly. These skills suffer from relatively long cooldowns, so make sure you group up your enemies to kill them very efficiently. For this video I will be using the Whirlwind build, which is currently the most beginner friendly and the highest DPS build in the game. And this build guide is split into two parts. So the first part is a whirlwind leveling build, so to go from level 1 to 50. And then the second part is the full endgame build, which requires at least level 50. So depending on which level your character has, you can skip forwards or watch both builds. So you will know what should you use later in the game. So with that said, let's move over to the leveling build. So to start off from getting to level 3, we have to put 2 points into these 2 nodes. Then from level 4 to 7 we spend 4 points in here. Then from level 8 to 20 we will get 13 points, which we wanna use by getting all of these nodes. And of course, don't forget that when you reach level 15, you should place your two-handed sword in your technique slot to apply blades and slows. Then from level 21 to 34, we will get these 14 points, which we should use by unlocking and upgrading all of these nodes. And then lastly from level 35 to 49, we will get these 15 skill points, which we should spend on these specific nodes. And then finally, don't forget about your renown, which after you gather all the renown in the game, you will get 10 extra skill points. I recommend to spend them towards your leveling progression, which I explained just a second ago. And then in the end game, I will show you later where to spend your 10 leftover skill points. Then as far as leveling up in Diablo 4 goes, it is very similar to other MMOs. So for the most part, this will mean that you have to constantly replace one rare item with a better one, all the way up to level 50. Since Whirlwind build requires a slashing weapon, that is the only slot where the DPS matters. All the other weapons we will only equip for stats, to increase our one single weapon's damage even more. The stats to look out for for a one-handed weapon are critical strike damage, damage to close, damage to slow, and sockets. And then for the two-handed weapon, the slashing only DPS, force skill damage, critical strike damage and sockets. And of course only upgrade the weapon that you're using for the whirlwind, at the blacksmith and then socket them with sapphires. Then for your clothes, the armor pieces typically grant us defensive and utility stats, except the gloves which offer offensive stats. So for your helmet, try to get a cooldown reduction, skill ranks and strength. Then for armor, get the life, strength and armor. Then for gloves, get plus stats to the whirlwind and critical strike chance. Then for pants, get life or strength. And then for boots, get movement speed or strength. And then lastly for your jewelry, try to get amulets with defensive skill ranks, fury cost reduction, damage and movement speed. And for rings, get the critical strike chance, critical strike damage, physical damage and damage to slow the enemies. An important thing to note is that you don't need to upgrade armor or jewelry while leveling. I only recommend to socket armor with rubies and jewelry with skulls and for the rest of the things save all of your upgrades for your level 50 build. So then in my final summary for your leveling build. Our gameplay loop consists of generating fury by using railing cry. Then we use the leap and lodging strike skills to then lastly use the whirlwind ability to decimate any monster in our way. And then lastly we want to save our call of the ancients for the elite and bosses. And if needed, we can kite them around until our cooldown is back up, and that's it. So now let's move over to the second part where I will show you your endgame build. By this point, you should be familiar with the whirlwind playstyle, what gear stats you should look out for, and etc. So as I did the most explaining at the start, so I will just show you the setup that you want to use. I tested multiple setups and builds, and this one was the best one. So first of all, for your skills, we want to use the war cry, rallying cry, challenging shout. Wrath of the Berserker, Iron Skin and Whirlwind. As for your gear we already discussed what stats you should look out for. But if you're looking for purely best of the best gear then here it is. So we want to get the Harlequin Crest and slot in the damage reduction gem. Then for your chest, get the chest armor called the Disobedience and slot in two damage reduction gems. Then for the gloves, get the Gore's Devastating Grip. Then for the pants, get the Temerity and slot in two more damage reduction gems. Then for the boots, get the Ghostwalker boots. Then for the amulet, get the Melted Heart of Selig. 
and then lastly for your first ring get the ring of the echoing fury and then for the second one get the bolt chieftain's ring and then lastly for your weapons we wanna get the two handed hammer of the dire whirlwind and sock it in to critical strike damage gems then the second weapon is the broadsword of the berserker ripping and we wanna slot in one critical strike damage gem then for the last ones equip the remeladens magnum opus and slot in one critical strike damage gem and then finally get the grandfather sword and slot in two same type critical strike damage gems then let's move forwards and this is how your skill tree should look like if you just came from the leveling build then this is very similar so again just copy these exact same upgrades and again don't forget that by gathering all the renown in the game you will get 10 extra skill points and then finally we have come to the paragon system at first it may seem overwhelming but if you're like me who's played the previous diablo games then this is quite self-explanatory so starting off this is how your first 26 points should be spent then this is how it should look like at 62 points then this is how it should look like around 92 points and then lastly this is our final goal at around 109 points Another new major feature of Paragon board are the glyphs, which are inserted into sockets and they will provide massive bonuses that scale with your stats. You can level up your glyphs by successfully completing nightmare dungeons. And here are my top 6 favorite ones. So we have the Exploit, Wrath, Martial, Territorial, Undoubted and the Imbiber. So then in my summary, the Whirlwind Barbarian is a very straightforward build that is very fun and does massive amounts of AoE damage. So then for your gameplay loop it is very similar for both builds. We just want to start by simply spamming the Rallying Cry, War Cry and Challenging Shout when the monsters are very close to our character. Then afterwards we buff ourselves with the Wrath of the Berserker and then we start channeling the Whirlwind. Remember to attack only with your main two handed sword because all the other weapons are only meant for extra stats. So just spin to win and have fun.